So hello and welcome back. Today we will have lecture 3-1A on probabilistic motion models. The learning objectives for today's lecture include describing the difference between a motion model and a sensor model, describing the difference between two typical motion models, including odometry-based and velocity-based, to discuss how to approximate odometry-based motion model noise error, to calculate the posterior probability of X given X prime and U, and to discuss how to sample the probability of X given X prime and U, and finally to extend our motion model that takes the map into account. There will be two days of lecture on probabilistic motion models, and then we will have two days of lecture on probabilistic sensor models. So now, what about the noise model for odometry? What governs error in the odometry when you have noise? So the measured motion is given by the true motion, but it's always gonna be corrupted with some noise. It's an electronic device. This is just the reality of doing work with these types of devices. So you have to compare the movement that comes from odometry versus what the control input anticipated the movement would be. And then we now model that as an epsilon, which would be a constant that we multiply to represent that noise. So you would have the delta rotation one, is equal to delta rotation one plus epsilon times the magnitude of delta rotation one plus alpha two delta translation. So that represents that constant variable epsilon to model our error. We would have something similar for delta hat of the translation where it starts out with the input value delta translation plus epsilon times alpha three, the magnitude of delta translation plus alpha four, the magnitude of delta rot one plus delta rot two. And then we would have the approximation again for the rotation two, where it's delta rot two plus epsilon times alpha five, delta rot two plus alpha six delta trans. So here are some typical motion models that we can use for estimating these values. So we have probabilistic motion models. The first one is called a normal distribution and it's epsilon over one. It's also called a Gaussian distribution. One over the square root of two pi sigma squared e to the x squared o negative, um, e to the negative x squared over two sigma squared. Or we can approximate a normal distribution with something that's a little bit easier to calculate called a triangular distribution. And this actually requires less computational power and so using that triangular distribution, we have zero if the magnitude of X is greater than the square root of six sigma squared. And otherwise it is the square root of six sigma squared minus the absolute value of X over six sigma squared. So now to come up with a closed form calculation for the odometry motion model, it uses the relative motion information as measured by the robot's internal odometry and we can say that at time t, the correct pose of the robot is modeled by the random variable x sub t. And the odometry reports back a related advance, x bar t minus one is x bar y bar theta bar to x bar t equals x bar y bar theta par. So in state estimation, what we want to do is find the difference between x bar t minus one and x bar t and see if it's a good estimate of the difference between x t minus one and x t, the actual movement of the robot. So the motion relative odometry or input would be given by ut and the ordered pair x bar t minus one and x bar t. So this is the, the input, input information that we give to the odometry motion model in order to estimate the belief of where the robot is at time t. So calculating the probability for a zero centered um, probability model, as we saw in the previous slide, for the normal distribution, we would have the probability of a normal distribution AB, where A is the query point or the mean, and B is the standard deviation, and it would return one over the square root of two B squared, e to the negative A squared over two B squared. Or for the triangular distribution, um, you would pass in AB once again, where A is the query point or the mean and B is the standard deviation. And it would return the max value of zero or one over the square root of six B 
minus the magnitude of A over 6B squared. So when you compare these two differences, one measured from odometry and one measured by subtracting two poses. So we compare, so to find these probabilities, we would compare two odometries where one of them is measured from the odometry and the other is measured by subtracting from the two poses and determining the values. So here is what the algorithm would look like for finding this model. So you would pass in your hypothesis, X and X bar. You would pass in your odometry, X and X bar. You could do it in this form, or you could pass it in as XT minus one and XT and UT, the odometry. Then you calculate delta translation, delta rotation, and the second rotation. And then you calculate the approximation of those values, delta hat trans, delta hat rotation, and delta hat rotation again. And then using those two, you find the probability for the initial rotation, the probability for the translation, and the probability for the second rotation. And you come up with some kind of constant to represent alpha one, alpha two, alpha three, alpha four, alpha five, and alpha six. You maybe do that experimentally in order to get the area in the rotation and translation. And then you return the product P1 times P2 times P3. So see here that the steps two, three, and four represent the odometry parameters U. Steps five, six, and seven represent the hypothesis values X and X prime. And then you use those to find the difference in order to find the error. And this concludes our initial lecture on the probabilistic motion model. I hope you've enjoyed and have a great day.